Okay. Yeah, I'm a little sore. Uh, the November project was awesome, but I used a lot of muscles that I wasn't supposed to on a taper week, so I'm a little sore. But today is day 54, and that means that after work, I'm going to the ferry. Then from the ferry, it's about an hour and a half, take it to the ferry, and then from the ferry, I couldn't find a ride. Um, the tricky part about the race, or sorry, the ride, the ride to conquer cancer, is it's in the middle of nowhere. It's called Coverdale, and it's hard to get to. Um, so in no way, shape, or form am I uh, being negative in any way. I'm just pointing out some things so then that way, hopefully next year, they can come up with solutions. Uh, I'm coming from Victoria. It's tricky uh, without a car. Uh, so I'm going to cycle from Tawasson Ferry Terminal to Cloverdale. I've mapped it out, uh, put it all up. I'm going to put it up on the video. And it's about 37 kilometers uh, to get to Cloverdale Fairgrounds before 8 o'clock is when they, uh, I guess, when they finish the bike drop off and sign ins and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm come yeah, Victoria's the capital city of BC, so uh, that's where I live. And so I'm traveling all the way through without a car, just showing um, the journey. It's more fun that way too, you know, you get a lot better content. So today is all about Levi James, and he shows me how to, well, he just shows me how to build strength and, and everything else uh, for day 54. So it's an awesome video. Uh, tomorrow's video is going to have a whole bunch of the journey that I went through today because I won't have time to edit it. And without further ado, have a great Friday, TGIF. Oh, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. What did you think of today's video? And what are you looking forward to the most about the future videos? What do you want to see from me? All right, Jesse, we're back to help you get conditioned for that ride to conquer cancer. My man, again, I'm really excited to be part of this. So if you watched the earlier video, you've already done your mobility warm-up. We're good to go. Shoulders are good. Hips and knees are good. Ready to start rocking. What we're going to do here, though, is we're going to mark out a 10-meter path that we're going to go back and forth on. Now, if you don't by chance have that much space, totally cool. You can do it in a much smaller uh, area, but ideally you want to find a nice place outdoors or maybe in a larger part of the room of your house. Either way, follow along like this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to mark out 10 meters. We're lucky enough to be on this beautiful field today, and we know that the diameter of this circle here is 20 meters, so we're going to work from the top end to the center and do 10 meter, run, 10 meter runs. First thing we're going to do is we call a tiger crawl. Come on in here, Jesse. Let me show you how to do this. So as we did before in the warm-up, we noted that when we get into this position, we always want to make sure the shoulders are over top of the hands and we're not drifting back, putting unnecessary pressure on the front of the shoulder. So to start this one, we call a tiger crawl. We're going to bring the knees under the hips, shoulders right over top of the hands, and we're going to move hands opposite the feet all the way to the center of the circle. So it's nice and easy. Keep them back flat. Coordinating left and right side. Nice and easy. All the way to the center. Woo, out of here. Yay, I'm at the center. You come up, come up, join me here. So now that we've come all the way in, in our crawl position, we're gonna move backwards by picking the knees up. Very important, as we go backwards, push off the toes and pull the knees up so that you don't scuff your heel and accidentally fall backwards. What also helps too is to coordinate the hands opposite the feet, just like we did in the crawl. So here, just like so. Nice and easy, except we're gonna move backwards, pushing off the toes. Ready? Here we go. All right, good. So that's the first run. Next we're gonna do what we call a bear crawl. So just like we did in the warm up. You push back into a downward dog position for that reach through. We're gonna stay in this position, feet nice and flat on the ground, legs nice and straight, hands opposite. Again, nice and coordinated. So we call a bear crawl. If you have more flexibility, you can keep your feet a little closer to your hands and get a bit more stretch in the hamstrings. All 
Nice. 10 meters. Good stuff. All right, coming back up here. So before, we did the knees up. Let's work the hamstrings a little bit. Take your hands, put them on the back of your head here. You're not going to interlock them and pull the head down. Just keep them placed up in here. You're going to pull your heels right up to your butt by activating the hamstrings. Really squeeze it and try and kick yourself in the butt. It's a very motivating exercise. Hands behind here, chest up. And again, you're pushing off the toes as you pull your heels up to your butt. Excellent. Okay. So now we're going to do is the only crawl where we actually face up. Get yourself into a tabletop position. Push the hands down. Don't let your shoulders come up into your chest. Push them down so you engage more of the shoulders and stabilize the upper back. Keep your hips up. And as we move forward, we're going to dig the heels in and pull forwards. So we're actually going to be activating a lot more of the hamstrings, which we just fired up with those heel kicks. All right, here we go. We call this the crab walk. A lot of people really don't like this one. But it is very effective. So we're going all the way forward. Until we get to the center. Okay, now this part gets a little tricky. You might not get it right off the bat. In fact, it's kind of more fun if you don't because it's quite entertaining. We're going to start jumping backwards. It's very unnatural. But let me tell you, if you ever have to get out of the way of an explosion, this is the way to do it. So, we're going to get it low in the squat. We're going to be pushing off the toes going backwards. And we're going to swing the arms up and back, just like those arm circles we started with in the warm-up. Okay, here we go. Reset after each jump, try not to rebound. That way you have a better chance of having better jumps. Good, whoo! That really gets those quads going. <laughs> So this is a really good exercise, especially for building up that explosive power that you're going to need to get up those hills or if you can do a sprint on the bike. All right, now we're going to do face to the side. This is what we call the monkey crawl. <clears throat> when we go and face this direction and we're moving to the left, we're going to put the right hand down first. So we're always coming back to the ready position. We're not going to stay down here and burn out our arms, okay? Stand up nice and tall, looking to the left, right, left, right, left, and back up, okay? One, two. And notice how I go up, I'm trying to keep my knees actually pretty close to my chest, as not to do this. You want it to be nice and controlled. Good. Pause for a second, I forgot what the next exercise was. <laughs> and Jesse, this is why we write this stuff down. You still recording? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, cool. That's why it's important to write things down. Sometimes you get a little carried away. It's good to have a plan. My friend. Oh yeah, this is the good stuff. <sighs> okay, so we just finished the monkey crawl to the left side. Now we're going to do a 180 twisting squat. Squatting down nice and low. As I stand up, I'm going to pick up the outside leg, spin backwards, squat again. Make sure you pull that knee up that's going to get the hip flexors as well as the quads, hamstrings, and glutes. That's kind of badass too. Of course, watch out if you've got somebody next to your workout partner. Okay, come on this side. So now we're going to face the opposite direction. Getting again down into a ready position. Now, when I'm moving to the right, my left hand goes down first. Fantastic. Okay, now we're gonna do is a lunge twist. Keeping the elbows together. Wanna we'll come around this side here? Yeah. <clears throat> Now I can catch my breath too. <laughs> yeah, it's it's also well, it's hot. It is hot. Oh yes, it is. Good stuff though. Good day to build up these tan lines. <laughs> <laughs> so as we lunge forward, keep your elbows together. So that way, you're going to get more rotation, more activation in the upper and lower back. So here, lunge forward, nice and deep. You don't touch the bottom of the knee to the ground. Bring the elbows to the outside of the knee. Bring it up. Step. Twist. Up. Step. 
twist. Keeping your elbows together. All right, get this, we're only halfway done. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the whole top of it backwards now. So coming on this side here. <clears throat> this will definitely be an edit point, holy crap. Yeah, I was, gonna say, I was gonna say, it's just like we could do this is this is one week and your reverse is the second week. Well, you wanna do, the, you wanna do them both at the same time. Yeah. It's really good to have forward motion, backwards motion, side to side. Yeah. It's good to warm up anything, because most of the time any injuries will come from something that we didn't warm up or didn't prep for. Yeah. Usually we're pretty good moving forwards and backwards. Most injuries we find are lateral injuries, we're going to the side. So very important, even though you're on a bike or some other fixed position, very important to always work everything so everything's nice and balanced. Okay, so let's move backwards. Back tiger crawl, same thing. Shoulders over the hands and moving backwards, coordinated. Try not to swing the body around too much. The more still you stay, the more you're gonna work your core and your quads. All the way back. Good. Now we've done the knees up before, now we're just gonna go forwards with the knees up. Keep the body up nice and tall and use the arms to help get those knees up nice and high. Now here's a quick note for those of us that think intensity is all about going crazy, right? Not always the best, especially when it's hot out like this. Very important, take a couple seconds, breathe, give yourself that time to rest. Just being out in the hot environment here is actually expending a lot of energy. The last thing we want to do is burn up before we get to the really good stuff. Okay. Now we're gonna do that bear curl backwards. <clears throat> nice and easy. Keeping the legs straight. Again, if the flexibility allows, keep your hands and feet close together. Beauty. Okay, hands up behind the head, heels up forwards. All right, and then we're gonna switch to the crab walk. Going backwards. Again, pushing the hands down. Hips up. God, so beautiful. Whew, this ground's hot. Hot potatoes. All right. And then we're gonna finish it off with some forward jumps. Make sure to push the toes down so you get that triple extension. Whew. Through the ankles, or ankles without an H. <laughs> Knees and hips. Whew. You can see just that little bit really gets the heart rate going. So, from top to bottom, all those exercises in exactly that order for 10 meters. Doesn't matter how long it takes you, just make sure you do it properly with a focus on form and breathing. Whew. It's hot out here. Okay, now we're prepped and ready. Let's get on to the next stuff. Let's get busy.